A big part of what makes Wellfleet Bay such a productive ecosystem is its mix of fresh and salt water. In the northern part of the bay, the Herring River teems with life during the warmer months. But the river's productivity has actually been compromised for over a hundred years, as I learned from Audubon Wellfleet Sanctuary Director Emeritus Bob Prescott. So Bob, tell me about the, the, the dike on the Herring River. Like when, when was it built, first of all? Sure, this, uh, it was first put in in 1909. It was a huge project and they dug out you know, sand from both sides and you know, sort of met in the middle and, and dammed it up. I think it failed once and then they finally settled it and they did it. And diking of salt marshes back then, in the late 1800s, early 1900s was very common. They diked off the Indian Neck Marsh. But this was a huge salt marsh, 600 acres. So, so the move, movement now is to, is to try to find a way to take it out. Right? Yes, exactly. To so rebuild about... the, yeah, the whole thing is to rebuild this structure because you, you've, you know, unfortunately you've got to leave parts of it. It's, you, know, you, you would have to build a road out here anyways because it's, you know, it's an island, a big island. It was settled and there was a community and all of that. So you, know, you have to have a road. Well, how do you do it? And rather than filling the whole thing is you've just got to create the biggest opening you possibly can engineer, from an engineering standpoint. Once it's built, it'll take 25 years to come up with a monitoring and after monitoring it, what's the right mix? When do you flood? When do you not flood? Because everything's going to change upstream. Right now, it's the marsh is subsided. It's 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 gone. It's got to rebuild. How do they rebuild it? And then you've got to uh, let it flood. And you don't want to flood too much. You don't want too much dieback. So there's a lot of there's a, a lot, lot of stuff. Of this is the most heavily studied project um, anywhere on Cape Cod, with the exception of the Superfund site at the you know the Mass Military Reservation and the Air Force Base. So what do you envision, Bob, when 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 the dike is finally gone? and the water flow is established uh, to its, its, yeah. its, its historic uh, levels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what do you, how do you see the, uh, the landscape changing around the river? Well, you, you, behind it, or over here, where you see a lot of salt marsh all around us. And on, if you, when, on the other side, it's a degraded salt marsh. So eventually you're gonna have salt marsh going way, way upstream. And so, as I said, acre for acre, that's where you know all of our shellfish, all the food is coming from. So that's going to you know restore itself, and it'll work its way eventually all all, all the way up. So you're going to get that. You're going to get storm water, and then from a wildlife standpoint, you know, everything is sort of blocked here. You know, a few herring get through, but not like the the run that you know used to be here. So eventually, you're going to have a really vigorous herring run, which is going to mean more fish in the harbor, especially when the fry start going downstream about this time of year, and then on out into the, you know, out into the harbor. So we're going to see a lot of change. Birds are going to adapt and evolve, and and uh, and make a, take advantage of, of the restoring habitat. Great. Well, I can't wait. To, hopefully, I'll be around to, to see it happen. Right? Yeah, I'm on the borderline on this one. Well, let's meet up in uh, 25 years. All right, that's a date. <laughs> Thank you for watching. For more exclusive video content, including short films, episodes, and features, be sure to click the subscribe button and look for us on social media at Explore New England Films.